Hi guys, welcome to EduTap and this is the fast track series for RBI Grade B 2018, a video series which has been brought to you by EduTap. Now, this series is all about the comprehensive coverage of current affairs from May 2018 to August 15th, 2018, that is a day before your examination. And through this series, we are also aiming to cover the ESI and FM concepts through various MCQs. Now, let me just quickly tell you about our previous results. In 2017, 124 edutapians reached the interview stage and 27 were able to make it to the final list. So here you can see the various courses offered by us along with their MRPs and you can choose from any of those courses whichever you are interested in. And uh, yes, let me tell you that we are running a discount of 30% currently. You just need to use the coupon code FLASH30 to avail the discount. Okay, so this particular video is going to cover the current affairs from 4th July 2018 to 8th July. That means we are going to cover the news from 5 days. Okay, so moving to the first news of the day. So the first news of the day is Genome Valley 2.0. See, uh, Genome Valley, it is a cluster of the multinational corporations which are based on the life sciences and it is located in Hyderabad. So you can see a hub of MNCs coming together in Hyderabad. Now, Telangana government has signed an MOU with the Singapore based Surbana Jurong for preparing a roadmap to upgrade the present Genome Valley. So, uh, it, this news is in regard to the upgradation of present genome valley to genome valley 2.0 so here the name of the state becomes important that it is telangana government which has signed and you cannot get confused with the andhra pradesh government as hyderabad is presently the capital of both these states uh, so yes you can read about genome valley more and if you find something useful you can just post in the comment section below so our next news is about KVIC, that is Khal Khadi Village and Industries Commission. It has launched its e-marketing system and the most important thing about this news is it is in-house developed and it is going to be a single umbrella marketing system. That is why it is important. Now see in the background of the Digital India Mission and the other steps which are taken by the government and its agencies to move towards the Digital India, this news becomes important. Now I have mentioned here about KIMIS. This is a software which will give real time data of sales and will also give the updated status. So are you able to link it with somewhere enam? That is the enam is the platform where Mondays will be connected all through the India. So similarly on those lines, this platform of Kimis is going to collaborate all the uh, KVIC stations across the India. So this is just a piece of information which is important from this news. Moving on. So next news of the day is about the first global mobility summit. Now see this mobility summit is based on the e-mobility. So that's why it is important. And secondly, it has to be organized by Niti Aayog. I have told you already that Niti Aayog is one of the implementing agencies of India for the sustainable development goals. So this body itself is important for us. And secondly, it is going to organize the first e-mobility conference in India. So you have to remember the place where the conference is going to be organized that is New Delhi and uh, yes you can also know about the body which is going to organize it here I have mentioned about the themes on which it is going to work you can just have a look on the themes moving on okay so another important appointment comes here Vishwas Patel has been appointed as the chairman of the PCI that is payment councils of India now see in the background of digital India and all the e-mobility options going on so uh, this PCI becomes important because it caters to the needs of the digital payment industry so now you know why this PCI is important and the name Vishwas Patel is again important here okay he has preceded Naveen Surya I have also mentioned here so that just to get a glimpse over it so C Vigil, very important app again for us as it has been launched by the Election Commission of India. The first such app to be launched by the Election Commission makes this app important for us. You have to remember the name C Vigil and uh, yes, 
one important thing is this app will be operation only where elections are announced so you can get uh, confused that maybe it is an up running app which will be available to all the users no it is going to be available only where elections are announced so about what is this c vigil see c vigil will allow anyone in the election bound state to report the violations of the modal code of conduct that is mcc so here a more transparent method has been provided by election commission to make this process of election free from any error okay that was it so here comes another important international appointment now see this particular news is related to the appointment of the post of the head of the un mogip so you need to first know what is this body particularly is see un mogip it is a united nations body that is united uh, nations military observer group in india and pakistan it was established in january 1949 by unsc so uh, it is important for us particularly because the first team of the unarmed military observers arrived in the mission area in january 1949 to supervise the ceasefire between india and pakistan in the state of jammu and kashmir so you see the first unarmed military observers were uh, arrived in india so that is why this particular appointment here is important for us in this background now the un secretary general antin antonio guterres has been appointed as the major general of the un army un mogip that would be it so another important scheme comes here cabinet has approved the umbrella scheme for relief and rehabilitation of the migrants and repatriates see nowadays we hear a lot about the refugee crisis like rohin rohingyas and the national register of citizens which is to be updated in the state of assam so in relation to that government has also taken steps so particularly ministry of home affairs becomes important for us to know that the ministry of home affairs has decided to merge the eight already ongoing schemes into one umbrella scheme and the name of the other scheme will be relief and rehabilitation of the migrants and repatriates so now you know that it is not one single scheme rather it is an umbrella of eight other schemes and uh, the ministry you need to remember uh, that would be it about this news okay one more scheme is here for you guys to remember it is sambal scheme now sambal scheme is important because one particular government is involved in the scheme so madhya pradesh government has launched the subsidized power scheme for the laborer and poor families that is for the families of bpl now uh, in this scheme the bill if it is going to be lower than rupees 200 then the beneficiaries will have to pay the actual bill but if it is more than 200 then it will be subsidized by the state government so it is like a step forward in the electrification of india so um there is expected that this scheme will benefit around 88 lakh families and uh, the government the state government and the name of the scheme is important to know here Okay so this news is related to the uh, recapitalization of RRBs since uh, government of India is taking various steps for the recapitalization of our banks so that uh, the banking system in our country is strengthened now this scheme of recapitalization has been extended to RRBs as well now what this scheme is all about let me just tell you Union cabinet has approved the uh, extension to uh, the RRBs up to 2019-20. Now this move will enable the RRBs to maintain their CAR that is capital adequacy ratio of 9%. Okay so let me just tell you what the CAR is. It is the ratio of the bank's capital in relation to its risk weighted assets and current liabilities. So these are the risk weighted assets and liabilities which a bank has. So in ratio of that what is the capital of, of a bank which has which it has to maintain this ar is basically decided by central banks that is like the rbi in our country and other bank regulators to prevent the commercial banks from taking the excess leverage and becoming insolvent in the process so uh, as you see so many insolvency cases are going on in the country so uh, this recapitalization scheme has been extended to rrbs now here i have mentioned a very important fact about rrbs so for now you need to keep a view over it rrbs are owned by the government of india 
the concerned state and the sponsor banks with the proportion of 50 15 and 35 percent respectively so the highest share is of government of india second highest is the sponsor bank and thirdly it is it goes to the state government to which the bank belongs so uh, that would be all about rrbs okay so another important app comes here that is gst verify mobile app now this in the background of gst the changes which have been taken place this app is important the body cbic that is the central board of indirect taxes and customs have developed a mobile app called gst verify now uh, this app is particularly to verify if the person collecting gst from the consumer is eligible to collect it or not so in the interest of the consumers the gst verify mobile app has been launched now you can read about cbic although i have already told you in the previous slides about this particular body so just go through it once so next is our environment related news nbwl that is the national body for wildlife has recently added four species to the program for critically endangered now see uh, you need to know the name of these four species they are very important i have mentioned here them northern river terrapin terrapin is a kind of uh, tortoise you can say clouded leopard arabian sea humpback whale and red panda so all these four species you have to buy hard them and they have been added in the recovery program for critically endangered species that means these all four are critically endangered species now uh, let me just tell you about uh, briefly about these two bodies which we have just talked about okay so first is the recovery program for critically endangered species uh, it is a centrally funded scheme as it is mentioned here and it is one of the components of the integrated development of the wildlife habitats so uh, this idwh let us talk about idwh here now this is for providing the support to protected areas and the protection of wildlife outside protected areas and the recovery for critically endangered species so this particularly is about uh, protecting the uh, wildlife of our country and you can have a look on these bodies and if you find anything in useful you can just post in the comment section below so here is another interesting news for us the united nations educational scientific and cultural organization that is unesco is going to set up a design university for gaming in vishakhapatnam so that means the university for gaming is going to be set up in the state of andhra pradesh now this particular news is important in the background of the uh, new steps or new universities which are going to be coming up in india so as this particular is related to gaming that is it will be the first of such kind of university and in the long run it is expected to provide employment to around 50000 people in 10 years so you just need to remember where is this university going to established and which organization is going to do so moving on government launches coal mine surveillance and management system okay so one is the surveillance and management system and another is the mobile app for the coal management only so first of all it is important to know what is the name of that app that is khan prahari that is the uh, savior of khan it has been khan is what a coal mine okay so uh, it has been developed by a subsidiary of coal india limited and bhaskaracharya institute of space applications and geoinformatics so this you need to know the app has been developed by whom and secondly uh, telling you about the system it is a web based gis application through which the location of sites of unauthorized mining can be detected that means through this particular system government is aiming to curb the menace of unauthorized mining okay so uh, yes that would be all okay so here is another interesting news uttarakhand high court declares entire animal kingdom as legal entities so you see entire animal kingdom includes animals which are even avian or aquatic species as legal entities which have rights duties and liabilities now see uh, this news is important for us to know here because uttarakhand high court is the one which has earlier declared the rivers ganga and yamuna as living entities of the state so that means the pollution to the state uh, uh, the pollution to the rivers can be curbed through that particular step and second is this now animal kingdom has also been declared as the legal entity so uh, you need to know uh, about these two things 
Okay, so here is a study regarding our farming and irrigation. It says that if Indian farmers make a switch from the crops like wheat and rice to uh, cereals like maize, sorghum and millet, then it will be able to save a lot of water. It will be around 33% of irrigation would be saved. So, you know, this is important for us to know in the background of the farming and irrigation, whatever is going on nowadays. So, uh, secondly, we need to know that this study was conducted by whom? So, the study was conducted jointly by the US-based Earth Institute that is in Columbia University and the Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. So, uh, this study has just said about the saving of water if we switch to the crops and secondly, uh, let me just tell you that as it has been declared by Prime Minister to bring a green revolution to Eastern India as well, as you know the northeast uh, the northern states uh, of punjab and haryana were uh, uh, taking the benefits of the green revolution but now it has been decided to switch over the, uh, the the revolution benefits to other parts of the country as well so this is in the background of that particular information and here also it is mentioned that the crops like maize pearl millet or sorghum would save irrigation as well as improve the production of nutrients like iron by 25 and zinc by 13 percent because soil is able to replenish itself so uh, this becomes important for us to know here secondly nascom open center for excellence for data science and ai that is artificial intelligence now before uh, moving on to the news let me just tell you what nascom is exactly now you see uh, there are various organizations for the welfare of the people these organizations are usually uh, the non-profit organizations so nascom is one such global non-profit organization for the welfare of the people who are involved in the it and bpo industry so uh, you can just read here and secondly this nascom has opened the center of excellence for data sciences and ai this ai has been in news a lot so uh, this becomes important for us to know that this center is going to be opened in bangalore that is in the state of karnataka so uh, here you can just see that oh, what is the aim of the center it aims to nurture the innovation in the emerging disruptive technologies like new ai and to leverage the power of data sciences as you know indian uh, it india is already an it hub so this news becomes important for us to know here moving to the next news AAI that is Airport Authority of India to set up Civil Aviation Research Organization that is CARO in Hyderabad that is in the state of Andhra Pradesh. So here it becomes important for us to know that uh, uh, AAI is going to set up this particular center in Hyderabad and what is this uh, implication behind this. So let me just tell you here that uh, this will take up the research work on particularly four priority areas that is uh, increasing air airport throughput throughput is how many flights can take off and uh, not and uh, then air, airspace optimization so as to curb the air traffic then cost effective infrastructure through the regional connectivity scheme as you know the regional connectivity scheme is also known as udan okay and secondly it is integrating drones in the civil airspace so these are the four priority areas on which this uh, caro is going to provide the indigenous solutions yes that would be all Okay, so July 7th, 2018 celebrated as the International Day of Cooperatives. Now, you know, cooperatives are basically the associations of uh, various people and they come together and mutually run any organization and then share the benefits and profits. So, you can say that more like a, a group of people which are working together on a model of the cooperation. So, uh, uh, this is important for us to know and secondly, the theme of the day was sustainable societies through cooperation. So, this is the theme of this year's International Day of Cooperatives and it the theme aims to create the sustainable societies through cooperation. Now, yes, a fact is mentioned here for you that first it was celebrated in 1923 by International Cooperative Alliance. Okay, that would be it. 
okay so here is another important appointment for us to note down justice adarsh kumar goyal has been appointed as the chairperson of ngt that is national green tribunal now since ngt is an important body for us so uh, from the point of view of any examination so adarsh kumar goyal's appointment is important here now see he has been appointed for a term of 5 years and secondly here you can read about ngt that it was established in 2010 and uh, it is mandated for the effective and expeditious disposal of cases which are related to environmental protection you must have seen various steps taken uh, by ngt in particularly the capital of uh, india so uh, that is why ngt becomes important for us here okay so final news of the series says cabinet approves accession to wipo copyright treaty and wpio performance and phonograms treaty now see wipo is a united nations organization which is particularly world intellectual property organization it works for the uh, intellectual property and their rights okay so a uh, union cabinet has approved the proposal which was submitted by dipp which works under the ministry of commerce and industry regarding the accession to these two treaties which have been mentioned above and this treaty extends the coverage of copyright to the internet and digital environment now you see a lot of news are coming up related to the e mobility the digital environment and other apps are, are being launched as well so all these news which are related to the digital revolution so called you have to keep a tab on all such news so uh, basically what is uh, the background of this news is it says that to, uh, it has been si uh, signed by the india uh, due to the national intellectual property policy that is nipr policy which was adopted by government to get the value for ipr through commercialization by providing guidance and support to the epr owners so that the indigenous iprs also are supported through this measure so yes that would be all you can read about wpio a bit more if you want to and whenever you get time so that was all about the comprehensive coverage of news from july 4th till july 8th if you guys have any query you can just drop us a mail at hello@edutab.co.in you can even give us a call at 8146207241 and our web website is www.edutab.co.in you can anytime visit our website okay so guys i have mentioned here the link of the telegram channel where you will be able to find all the pdf content of this series particularly so uh, go and download it thank you and happy learning and please do like subscribe and share this video thank you